sit under that green, green tree in your heart. Sit under that green, green tree in your heart. Could be, could be, could be, could be, could be. Could be, could be the singing bird. Enfield Creek's water power and scenic beauty were the heart of a thriving 19th century agricultural hamlet. Before the arrival of the Euro-American residents of the hamlet of Enfield Falls, the upper valley of Enfield Creek was home to several Iroquois hunting and trading trails. Any Iroquois settlements in the region, however, were destroyed by American soldiers during the Revolutionary War and the lands around the Finger Lakes were divided up into tracts of land that were used as payment for Revolutionary War soldiers. Some East Coast families chose to move west to these parcels of land in the frontiers of western New York and establish communities like Enfield Falls. The hamlet of Enfield Falls began around 1810 with the construction of a sawmill and, shortly thereafter, a grist mill. That grist mill was the precursor to the one that you are currently standing in. Settlers in the region at the turn of the 19th century saw the land within the valley and gorge of Enfield Creek as useless land that couldn't be farmed or developed. Some people, however, like Benjamin Ferris and Isaac Rumsey, saw the water power of the creek and its tributaries as ideal for the construction of their mills. With the creation of these industries, Enfield Falls was born, and for the better part of the 19th century, it continued as a service hamlet for the local farmers. Businesses like a blacksmith shop, tannery, and general store joined the grist mill and sawmill to form the core of this active community. The community of Enfield Falls had one service that made it very different from other typical service hamlets, however. It had the Enfield Falls Hotel. The hotel was operated by the Wickham family for 40 years in the middle of the 19th century. They took advantage of the scenic beauty of the valley and gorge to attract early ecotourists to the hamlet. The owners of the Enfield Falls Hotel began building trails and bridges through the gorge to Lucifer Falls in order to provide more dramatic experiences for their visitors. The hotel and the other industries in the hamlet thrived until the advent of the 20th century when many of the advantages of the hamlet's location were countered by modern technology. People began moving away from the hamlet and into more bustling communities around the state like Ithaca, Syracuse, Buffalo, and even New York City. By 1915, most of the remaining residents in Enfield Falls were either renters or summer residents, with many of the buildings being abandoned altogether. At this point, businessman and philanthropist Robert H. Treeman and his wife Laura began to buy up property along the course of Enfield Creek. By 1920, they had purchased almost 400 acres, all of which they donated to New York State. This land was used to create the Enfield Glen Reservation. This began the long connection between the Treeman family and the many parks of the Finger Lakes. The focus of the work in the early days of the park was to enhance the scenic beauty of Enfield Glen by creating trail systems and other amenities. This enabled visitors to more safely and completely enjoy the amazing scenery. Robert H. Treeman's dedication to his work shows how this connection with the park goes far beyond the initial donation of the land to the state. The last 20 years of his life were dedicated to the preservation of the landscapes of New York and the creation of park spaces for the enjoyment of New York's residents. He undertook these efforts first as an interested party and part of the organizational body for the Enfield Glen Reservation, and later, after its creation in 1924, as the president of the Finger Lakes Parks Commission. 
One of his efforts included bringing in landscape architect Warren Manning from Boston to consult on a master plan for the park's trail system. Manning also worked on the design of the stone bridges and buildings in the park at the same time that he created similar designs for the campus of Cornell University. Many of these designs were implemented through the actions of Robert Treeman and the employees of the park during the 1920s. Additional projects were completed by the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, during the Great Depression. A CCC camp was created in the park in May of 1933. For the next eight years, the men of the CCC worked on improving the infrastructure of not only Enfield Glen, but also the other parks in the Finger Lakes system. In the summer of 1935, however, their work changed from construction to reconstruction when a major flood washed through the park on the evening of July 7th. This disastrous flood destroyed a great deal of the work done by the park's employees in the 1920s and some of the work undertaken by the CCC in their first two years. Much of the remaining six years that the Enfield Glen CCC camp was active was dedicated to rebuilding the washed out trails, bridges, and buildings of the park. During this time, Robert H. Treeman's ceaseless work for the Finger Lakes Parks Commission came to an end with his death in 1937. In commemoration of his many efforts, the Enfield Glen Reservation was renamed in his honor following his death. Plaques dedicated to Robert and Laura Treeman can be found in both Robert H. Treeman State Park along the Rim Trail and in Buttermilk Falls State Park on a drinking fountain near the swimming area. Their son, Alan, continued in their footsteps by staying actively involved in the expansion of the Finger Lakes Park system, including the addition of the marina which bears his name today.